position filled? I did okay. speak to her last week and she did say she was not Okay. Great. I'll yell at her if I see her next door across the street and tell her to get the letter. I won't yell at her, but you know. And you're passing out comments right now. Hey guys, you're live, so. Okay, thank you. Don't know this pick and chair throwing. Throw a punch in. I got a freaking here yesterday, but I leave them wherever they are. Oh, he's got the Tira. He's got the Tira sign on his pen, too. I know the T. That's because uh, my, my pens always disappear. Well, I, I leave mine all over the place. I should start that. Um, this is the last time. Oh, no. I guess I'd like to ask him. Do it. It's important. It's not this. Oh, there it is. Your name plates ordered right now. Your the city council plates are in place, so we'll just pull those real quick. And this is for continuous plate. I need to get them. Anyone calls your name? Yeah. We'll do. Although Karen could have just said, "Yeah, there you go." Thank you. We'll get started in one second. We're getting our recording material going. For the record, we've heard uh, that Carol Blotnick Burroughs will be tendering her resignation for the board, so we will have an open position. Um, tourism board members, the way that works is our clerk's office will then advertise the position 
and the qualifications. Ms. Blackby Burroughs was filling an at-large seat, not one of the lodging or restaurant seats. So we'll advertise for an at-large position. Based on the new charter board, please recommend their names to the city clerk's office. They have office. to reside in Trinidad for a year, right? Um, they have to reside in either so Trinidad county. or the county the for county one year. year. Okay. One year. Just want to make sure on that one. And the new charter allowance allows us to seat uh, folks that do live in the county, but they, we must have a majority of city residents on the board, and I believe all four of you qualify as city residents. So this position we could take someone who lives in the county. Okay. Thanks, Chair. Approval of minutes of the June 2nd and June 6th. We want to make one amendment to the minutes. It's number six. It says, apologize to Tom Murphy. It should be to Tom Cress. So we would ask when you, when and if you make an amendment to make it as a, when, make a motion, please make it as amended. I motion to approve the minutes with the corrections. I'll second. I'll second. Everybody in favor? Anyone opposed? So it passes. Yes. Thank you. Um, we're holding the financial report because of the ongoing discussion about what expenditures should go to the tourism board uh, fund or not. So we will. Um, push that report out an additional month as we have received an opinion from the city attorney. So in discussion with the finance director, we've kind of suspended that financial report to you guys until we resolve the issues. Then we'll come with a full report explaining what expenditures are there and what, what expenditures might potentially be moved, if any. Okay, so. So do we have other minutes to approve? We have two, right? <coughs> We had the old ones and then we had last meetings, right? Yes. So we have, so we have the meeting yeah. before. Oh, I apologize. The one with last. I apologize, yes. The June 6th was the most recent. Is that the one I missed? Mm hmm. I think mean, 16th no. was no, no. no. It would be the June 6th. And you missed the June 6th. It was June 6th. Yes. Oh, we just approved the May one. Okay. So now we're June 6th. Uh, so no, but go ahead. I approve the minutes for the June 6th. We need a motion. Um, I motion to approve the minutes for I'll second that. June 6th. Okay. Tom, are you good with that? Is Tom good with that? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, call the call the order. All in, all in uh, favor. favor. Any All right. Let me know. Okay. It passes, Chair. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor Stevens, for calling that to our attention. I was flying through the next item. And I saw them both there, too, and I flew through them. I don't know. I did, too. <laughs> I saw them both. I saw that the grant guidelines, is that, is that updated for the year? That is a down lower on the, um, on the agenda. I believe we're at petitions and communications. Petitions or communications, what were written. Let's see if anyone has signed up. I believe everyone in the audience is on the agenda. Okay. Who's first? Um, well, We're not as a petition, but as a listed item. As a listed item. Okay. Oh, I gotcha. Um, petitions or communications or over I guess the only thing is with the guy from Colorado.com. Okay. Uh, Chris Newton. He said he sent a bill to the city. It's a, it's a small bill for the city of Trinidad to sit on Colorado.com. Okay. The gentleman's name was Chris Newton. He was with yeah, the state. I'll, I'll forward you. And, and okay. Email. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. Policy items. Policy items. Uh, appropriate expenditures for lodging, tax, funding. And so as I said, when we posted the agenda, we were a little late getting it out yesterday. We were trying to decide how to report back to you. Both City Manager Greg Sun and City Attorney Les Downs are attending the Colorado Municipal League organization meeting. So neither one of them are available to be in town. 
in order to be responsive to you, we posted a memo from the city attorney related to this issue to you. And in that, uh, Mr. Downs also stated that he would not be in town. Um, the, the city management has requested an opportunity to address you, but because there were, we're not able to be at this meeting, we're asking um, for this decision to be set aside for the moment. There is some discussion over exactly what qualifies as a marketing expenditure. The mayor has respectfully asked that city council address this first as they will need to be the ones to give direction to city manager and city attorney on where we go from here. Uh, Mr. Downs has posted his opinion and I believe you all received a copy of that memo. So in terms of our role as the tourism board, at this point it's to wait and allow city council to have that discussion with the city manager and the city attorney and then both potentially both the manager and or attorney will come back and address you and um, city council will make the decision on exactly how we're going to handle this going forward. So I'm not trying to be vague purposefully mm -hmm. it's just that decision doesn't rest within staff i wanted to be very clear though because when we left the meeting mm -hmm. last time i told you we would go back create the figures of what needed to be moved out and when i got to the next level of discussion with management it was suggested that we set that aside for now until city council has a chance to address where and how this is being spent so do we I, know how long we have to wait I do not know how long you have to wait. It's not within my purview to forward it. I know that um, I know that the city manager has interest in getting a second opinion on the matter. So, so I do not know how long that will take. I know he has spoken with Cy. And this is on on the wages at the Bauckham Center. And, and it's on all the expenditures, really. What qualifies? What doesn't? What, um, to well, well, what, when I went home, I started thinking about it, and I, I thought that. The board should have one paid position because there's so much going on with it that that would be my feeling i think it's a matter of figuring out what mm -hmm. the charges are so let's say for example the city split so it's going to be decided at the council level what qualifies as a marketing and advertising expense and then based on that decision city management will turn around and we'll start combing through the expenses and we'll decide specifically that can get really specific like for example Perhaps the trolley it can be paid for out of tourism funds, but can the storage of the trolley or can the maintenance of the trolley? So we've got to answer it at that level. So um, I think I was a little bit naive at our last meeting when I told you I would go. In my mind, I knew what that meant, but this is a decision that needs to be made at a higher level. So Well, that's, that would be my recommendation, that anything that is done with tourism should be paid out of those monies. Out of those monies. Yes. So I think it started with the city attorney issuing the opinion. He issued it to your board as well as to council. The next step is now that council has an opinion, they'll work with the manager to evaluate that and act appropriately. So I feel like council is the next level of discussion on this, and then we'll see where it goes. But I will tell you, at some point in the future, this will come back to you with a little bit more direction than I'm providing today. I want to leave the topic by assuring you that it is going to be addressed and it will be addressed. So this is not something that's, to your question about how long, it's not something that's sitting on the back burner. It's actually been talked about almost every day as Councilmember Griego is shaking her head, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, so um, it just isn't, going to be discussed here until some resolution is made so we'll be back with the with a plan for you on what the decisions are and how we're going to appropriate react so that puts a couple of things that we normally do like approving bills and financials and a little bit of a waiting a little bit of a holding, a pattern. holding pattern right now thank you that's a great way to describe it until this resolution comes about okay, okay. thank you Tara. you're welcome um, unfinished items for Trafford approval? Yes, I'm going to turn um, your attention to the grant document that Ms. Raven has prepared. So one of the things that you gave us direction on at the last meeting was to add the guidelines. Section 7-47 of the City Lodging Tax Tourism Fund created in there as well as to appropriately change the um, the application process to include our new branding 
we had one further question for you. Do you, would you like some, this is how it has existed for many years. We've added the legislation. Looking at the grant application, would you like to see further criteria up on which you judge the applications? This is not something that necessarily needs to be answered today. This is an ongoing um, discussion, but what we want to do is finite our grant request applications, make sure that we have criteria for how that spending is going to um, meet not only our legislative requirements, but also you may have six, I'll just throw out a, an example. You may approve a grant round of $40,000 and you may get $70,000 in requests. And they may all qualify as tourism expenditures. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm asking is, can you look at this and tell me if you think there's enough criteria in there to judge A against B against C against D? because it's a real possibility that you'll get more requests than you actually get, um, than you actually have available to spend. Um, I would need to spend some time yeah. with this. This is, a, this is fine. This is our first draft to okay. take a look at and come back. Yeah. Okay. Based on what you come back in your opinion um, with, then we'll alter the grant application. Our goal is to have this ready to go so that if some funding is released, you are able to determine amount that you want to spend and we can immediately um, do a call for applications for funding. Um, Ms. Michaels did send uh, Mr. Downs an email last night to verify that um, the types of, of grants that you give to local tourism organizations for the marketing of their events, that that would qualify. And Mr. Downs did say, within his opinion, it would qualify. So. Um, I think that elevated his his stating that, that that would qualify as an expenditure, elevated the importance of getting this application ready. That we would like you to take a look at and see if this makes sense from a tourism perspective. So if you can take this survey on yourself within the next couple of days and give us some feedback, if you'll email Raven and I. If you think you would like more comments on this, if you think, um, um, this doesn't make sense or some of it, it isn't applicable. You understand we took this directly from the craft tourism assessment. So we're, we stand ready to amend this or to um, accent it as needed. But the idea was to put this out to the general public, but more importantly to put it out to those boards and commissions to um, the citizen groups that are active within the community to get some feedback on where they think our tourism efforts stand at this time. Yeah, no, that's an excellent point to get a centralized group. And my, like, my main concern is things like, does the city of Trinidad have assigned trained staff in tourism? Right. If you're not affiliated with the city, you wouldn't even know those answers, right? So part of this is based on perception. Uh -huh. it's, and, and it may or may not be reality, but what it would give the board is if the answer that comes back from the community is that we don't have a tourism staff and the board feels like we do have a tourism staff, then we've got a perception problem. If the community comes back and says we don't have a tourism staff and we get some comments as to why, maybe the comment is they come into City Hall and they never know who to speak to. These are the things that will give us direction on how to address it. I think there's reality and then there's the perception of how we're doing and this we need a baseline for perception so we can turn around and do this again in 24 months and see if we've moved that needle part of being a tourism board member is managing that money in the public in a transparent way and receiving feedback so one of the things that suggestions that came out of the craft initiative is that we start by building a baseline survey and we take the results as they come in and we begin to talk about them if they're not what we believe they should be then we begin to talk about how we move the needle on those perceptions okay, okay? so we're going to fill this out and give it to you you're going to take a look at it yes and, and as if you were taking it mm -hmm. and give us some feedback on where you think it makes sense where you think we might need to add why you may say why are we asking this question we can go back to our craft tourism assessment materials and say these are the reasons. So we thought maybe the best thing is for the five of you to take it cold and let's see what your reactions are. Okay. 
And our hope is to put this out there August 1. That's our goal. To have launched this August go, 1. It's going to go community wide. Is it's going to go community wide, but it's going to have a targeted invitation. So it'll be both open to the public and at the same time targeted to specific individuals to take. And so will it go outside the city too, just the surrounding area? I think there are surrounding areas probably more appropriate, but we have folks that follow us from all over online. So we met, might get a, somebody to take it from Texas or from Denver, uh, different things like that. Part of it will be an introductory, you know, where do you reside? What county are you in? That'll give us an opportunity to look at how outsiders view versus insiders. So this beginning uh, tourism assessment will be kind of the start of where we do our work on uh, how we communicate with the public. So these are the two deliverables we have from the rural tourism model thus far. I want to thank Ms. Raven for putting them together. Do you guys have any other questions on, on what we need back from you on those two? Good job. Okay. Thank you. And Ms. Michaels, I think we are at new business. I'm going to take a seat. New business. Number one. Easier to your up. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Madam Chairman, uh, members of the board, and uh, Commissioner Grego of the uh, <laughs> I, I, I applaud you when you ran on your campaign you said you wanted to market the city and market well, so I, I applaud you on taking that uh, very seriously. Um, I wasn't sure Tara was very busy with the space to create. <laughs> I dropped off the uh, proposal. I wasn't sure if you got it or if I needed to pass that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we also want to just note, uh, prior to the presentation, we want to thank Rick and KCRT. They doubled the number of ads and donated um, for July, for our 4th of July event that Main Street's doing. So Ms. Schultz was able, from our Main Street board, to work that out. And we want to thank you for making that, um, making that donation to our event. For some free advertising. Thank and you. then uh, to back up a little bit, you were very busy with space to create, <laughs> and uh, the I was in a uh, government meeting in New Mexico, and there was an investor there, and he mentioned he wanted to applaud uh, the city of uh, Trinidad on the uh, the ceremony there, and uh, he said, "Man, I'll tell you what, that uh, Trinidad's got it going." And, uh, <laughs> He wished that uh, the town that he was invested in was uh, doing as well as Trinidad. And so, uh, Thank you. What's his first name? Uh, Sal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's he, he exactly, and then yeah. you, of course you met Sal. He yeah. is exactly. Yes, and uh, he did exactly. He complimented uh, the city of uh, Trinidad. He goes, well, I tell you what, uh, he goes, I'm, I'm invested in New Mexico. And he goes, uh, hey, Trinidad's got to go. And, uh, and it's true. And uh, I mentioned it many times. You know, if you. Uh, Surrounding cities wish they had what Trinidad had going on. It, uh, it is. It uh, it does have a lot, and it's uh, getting to peak. It, and we haven't even seen what uh, space to create uh, is capable of doing. So, anyway, the reason why I, I stopped by this morning is, of course, is to continue the radio ad campaign that the uh, city has done. And um, last year, me and Jonathan Taylor uh, worked to sit there and allocate uh, more ads to the months that needed them versus the the months that uh, were less traveled and this is pretty much a parallel of last year and uh, we'd like to look at it. the other thing is of course kcrt has three radio stations that cover northern new mexico and three that cover southern colorado and we uh, have uh, uh, radio towers from walsenburg all the way into angel fire new mexico and the raton pass so with our coverage on I-25 is very strong. And one thing that uh, I did want to mention is that uh, we did get the, uh, the Nielsen ratings came out and uh, radio hits 94% of the uh, public. Uh, it's the number one media out there. It's free, it's powerful. Uh, every car has a radio, every home has an average of three. And, Thing about it is, is it it does hit the. Uh, I'll let you pass it out. But exactly what that's what it is is that uh, the uh, radio is a is just a very uh, 
proud for me, and we'd like to continue to use that to, to brag for the city. And then uh, we are currently, uh, we start off uh, June uh, to talk about all the events that uh, the amenities that uh, the area has. And then also uh, we, uh, we did go all board on the July events. As Ms. Tara uh, announced, we did want it to sit there. And uh, there's a lot going on. And uh, so we, we wanted to continue doing so. And uh, any questions? Is there a way to get, uh, I, I don't listen to the radio, I sure. apologize. Uh, is there a way for us to have any, have the samples of what the ads oh, are? Oh, sure, exactly. I can, I can uh, email you a few, few of the ads and... Uh, if you'll email that to us, sir, we'll distribute sure. it to the tourism exactly. board. Yeah, I, I, want, I want to see that here it goes. Sure, exactly. And, and I don't see it might be right here in front of me, but I don't see it. Is there a, is there a current price on here that we've been paying this year? Uh, basically, what we do is it's a little over six dollars per spot, and exactly, I apologize that it is not on there exactly. Okay. And it, it is a uh, it, so you know there's a on the months that there is a hundred dollar uh, hundred spots, basically it's just a little over six hundred dollars. So that's an easy way to. So. so let me add up the spots really quickly at six dollars a spot. And you said the there again. What I did was I I turned it pulled the last year and then. Uh, Jonathan converted into this one, so I did uh, very good. The, uh, My only concern was just the four ads in January, February. Did you want to distribute things a little more? You know, they actually needed more, but uh, mm -hmm. he kind of came up with the, you know, that. Except for in the city of Trinidad, historically, from about February 20th on, is when spring break happens in town, and then the month of March, just as a side note. So that's 792 spots for an approximate cost of 4,752. If you approve it, I would suggest approving not to exceed 5,000. If you would like for us to come back at the next meeting for approval with an actual cost of each amount. Well, I don't know if the cost is... I want to hear examples first. Oh, okay. Sure, because I will. So maybe some... And then did you want us to redistribute the months or were you were you happy I with the way that that's laid out? I see a little more in February. A little more in February. And you know what? Go ahead. I see a lot of tourists January, February. Yeah. Right, right. And Me and you're downtown. We've, we've and seen some changes. We've in seen the some months. changes down here and I know it was nice weather this year, but I've seen changes January, February that, you know, I think March is a little slower than anything, but I see because people are getting ready for different things coming up, graduation and stuff like that, but I see more changes in January, February that you've got to be aware of. Just as from my old Wendy's <laughs> days. Yeah. That wasn't that far ago. <laughs> yeah, three years, but four, four ads for a month, I mean, what are you going to do? Exactly, and, and, and I, 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 I didn't, but the, you know, the city went with, with that recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, and I, I, I want to say something else. December, a hundred ads. December's over if you're doing the hundred ads. I think it should start November, mm -hmm. because people start buying right. in November, and by the middle of December, uh, I have a mad rush. But that's with our local people, and and I think we ought to start them in November. And, those and, and I see no April in here. Thank you. But you know what? I, I agree that uh, February February is, of course, Valentine's. A lot of people are doing that. Of course, uh, also there. I think there's some skier holidays in there, and then uh, also uh, the income tax time. You go from January to the end money. So the I do like that recommendation. And uh, December is a very well traveled, uh, of course, because of. Get their vacation. Yeah, I, I think November should be a little bit more in November. You know, so, yeah, Rick, it sounds on. like maybe what we need to do is um, have you email Raven and myself uh, several examples, maybe three sure. or five examples of ads sure, exactly. that have played throughout the past year. Very good. And then let's set an appointment to sit down and rebalance the, the months and bring this back at the Senate sure. meeting in July. Okay. And it has been beneficial for some of the other um, boards, like the Main Street Board, that we have this in effect because I know they use our ads for like July 4th and others. So, 
sort of a win-win for everybody. And uh, yeah, the one thing, the, the city does communicate well. And you know, the, 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 the I have been meetings where the, the uh, commission doesn't know what the uh, lodge or the tourism board is doing. So uh, there is this uh, good communication with that. So. Okay, great. Okay. Very good. I will uh, go ahead and uh, give a couple uh, different drafts. And then I will also uh, get some uh, emails of some of the, the different things that uh, we have done or what we are doing. So. You can email those through us, Rick. We'll take three to five, and Raven will set up that appointment for us Very to good. sit down and rebalance. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like five. You'd like yeah. closer to five? Yeah. yeah. And throughout the year, correct? Yes. To show different things that were advertised? Yes. Thank you. Very good. Billboard manual contracts? Um, what's that? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, are you done, Rick? Are we done? Yeah. So good. that means that Rick is going to come back on the agenda for next year. He is. For approval. For approval. As an uh, old business. business for approval okay. on here. Okay. And we will get the rebalanced ads out to you before, and we'll get the ads for you to listen to so that you'll be prepared to actually vote at the next meeting. Okay. Perfect. So we'll have that in place. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Rick. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Rick. Thank you. renewal contracts. Andrew, are you prepared to do this one or do you want me to? Okay. I didn't bring anything to do it. I just okay. kind of over the phone. Okay. Our out front media billboards are coming up for renewal. Where are they at? Um, I haven't been on the highway to see them. So I know a little bit about okay. it. Okay. So on the highway, I think it's 87 that comes from uh, it is 87. Amarillo. Amarillo. Uh -huh. uh, there, there's two of them there. It's around Capulin and around Des Moines. Yeah. Those are the two locations that I can see on the map. Right. Do you have examples of them? We can get examples of them. These I've never seen them. predated us, so I've I haven't seen them. physically seen them, and I have. I was quite disappointed in the, the, the how they're small boards. Okay. So if we, I do think that we're all ready to look at the billboard contracts. Want to see what we can do to make them fresher. Mm -hmm. I somehow, you, you had mentioned about different ones from yeah, Albuquerque. I, those are really cheap in a row. And I think that that's like a whole work session. We almost need to see what we currently okay. have, see what's available. And We don't yeah. want to give up any that we have right now. Okay. Okay. So you want to see where they are. And you want to see what's on them. And what's on them. And what's on them. And we want to know what's available, uh, what else is available. I think, and I believe we should increase our billboard exposure and we should come up with a marketing plan. The sign I talked about this a little bit, just starting at Amarillo. Okay. What's available and, and tell or you know. Yeah. Or corridors. Yeah. Amarillo's one corridor, oh, Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Oklahoma. Coming across? Yeah. Coming across Oklahoma into oh, Clayton? Yeah. Okay. And Oklahoma. So we the really need to, we need to. Really they, are, they will, they come across that way. They will okay. see those. I think it'd be fresher look. Well, it, okay. and, and that's really what the main drug of our traffic and actually where the more economically feasible boards for us to get a program together. Exists. I think so because the three that we have right now are extremely expensive when you look at our budget. Uh, well, I'm not counting the ones here okay. locally. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Consider traffic counts. Can you do traffic Cause counts? counts? Yeah. you got to consider traffic counts when you put up a billboard. And I'm, a, I'm thinking that the reason that the ones going to Clayton are more expensive because that's the better mm -hmm. travel. Yeah. That's the better travel. Well, there's more states that come in through right there. Albuquerque, yeah. yeah. you, you don't really start getting traffic until you get uh, the Texas traffic in, uh, approaching from I-25. Like Las Vegas or something? Uh, Albuquerque. Well, there's, there's a plenty there. available starting at Las Vegas heading up this way. I saw those. Yeah. I was thinking We've Santa Fe. I just know. I just remember that this small one here that we have outside of town is like $600 or something or $800. And the one in New Mexico is $250. So we lost one of the local ones. We used yeah. to have two that were coming right into What's town. What's the one that's right into town? Uh, the one that says Trinidad uh, next exit or Trinidad. Um, it's a yellow board. It's, it's actually a nice board, but it needs it's to be pulled up because it's so small. You can't oh, okay. say much on it. It's just so small. But There's it does say turn it into there. And you don't want to say a lot on the billboard. No. Yeah. Because you've got like like eight just, seconds to read what's on the billboard. I would like to just see one with the trolley car. 
We used to have one. one. Yeah. I think it, it's Obie's now. It's right. a long time that was. And, and if something control. comes available, we need to know about it immediately. Available locally? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so this gives us direction. We weren't sure. I want to thank Mr. Wallace. He flagged that these contracts were coming up. They were not on our radar. So thanks so, for doing that. So, so that, this will give us a chance to have that discussion. Okay. So that would be on our next agenda? It will be on our next okay. agenda. So what I'm, what I'm hearing you say that we'll bring back to you is where are the ones we have now and what are on them? What is available in the corridors for Amarillo, for Albuquerque, for Oklahoma, and for Santa Fe? What are the prices? And then traffic counts for all those corridors. So we can look at those and then um, we'll start making some decisions based on how much yeah, I, I, dollars I, are there. I feel that coming down from Denver is, is going to be expensive it, well, and not it's necessarily. Probably good. It's probably good. If we don't have anything to there. One bit and find out what they cost. You know what I mean? We should just to have comparison. Mm -hmm. coming just south. so you have a balance. Yeah. Call you know, you just have one. Because we have a sideways one as you're coming into town from mm -hmm. the one. one. Yeah, that's a one. one. That's not a billboard, though. That's a, it's just a signage. Mm -hmm. just Thank a you. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Both out front, media, and look. So we'll start there. But if we aren't able to bring you examples of ones within the corridor, we'll look and see if there's other outdoor advertising. Does media Lamar companies. do? You, does the city do business with Lamar? Outdoor billboards. Those are the pretty good site. Lamar. Lamar. Lamar billboards actually does the all of those the block I twenty five corridor mm -hmm. around Rack Hill. Mm -hmm. So it's Lamar, and you're out of Albuquerque. Okay, thank you. And no, they're not. We're we're doing outdoor yeah. media and little those outdoor the advertising big, right they, now. They own most of the real big. Thank you. I started thinking the city of Lamar. No. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, RDO presentation and proposal. Good morning. My name is Connie Martinez, and I am with KRDO News Channel 13, Colorado Springs Pueblo in southeastern Colorado. Um, let me. I've already met Karen yes. and Craig. I have so not met We have not met, but we have talked on the phone many times. Tom. Connie Martinez. Nice to meet you, Tom. Camilla Cam. Hi, Camilla. Connie Martinez. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about myself. I am actually a Rat Home girl. I was born in Rat Home Miners Hospital and graduated from Rat Home High School, class of 78. So um, I am very familiar with this part of the country, with the Rat Home Basin that includes not just Los, Los Animas County, but Huetfano County and Colfax County of New Mexico. Um, and in the past year, I've actually been working this area um, as a marketing professional, working with KRTN and Bill Donati, and um, with another broadcasting company that has radio stations that um, are out of the Taos area. So I am familiar with the business community here in Trinidad and with the challenges and um, possibilities that you have for bringing tourism into the area. So um, I'd like to go ahead and present some information to you. And I hope uh, I can pull this up. It's probably going to be on. Yes. Let me Thank you, Andrew. Oh, there we go. Ah, there we go. I also have hard copies, but uh, if you don't mind, I'll just pass those over to you after um, you do the presentation. And I'll get through it as quickly as I can. Um, Let's see, and Andrew, can you have me do this a uh, yeah, full, yeah, can you full just, screen? You, so, oh, you want yours yeah. full screen? Oh. Yes, I'm at the age where I <laughs> should be able to see. Yeah. No explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. And did that take it off the big screen? Yeah. It's in presentation mode. Yeah. Well, the A, B, and the fans to fail sometimes. <laughs> they don't always make those the easiest for eyes to see. I should know the answer to this, but I, I have no idea what it is. What is the KRDO Telemundo 
Heroes. Heroes. What is that about? Okay, so um, I'll be happy to uh, explain that to you, and it's, it's coming up in the presentation. But um, in the meantime, um, not only do I represent KRDO News Channel 13, which is the ABC affiliate that covers this area, uh, but we also have a Telemundo affiliate, uh, which is across all of the cable, satellite, and over-the-air outlets available in this area as well. Um, we also have a digital channel, 13.3, that's over the air, uh, and that's Heroes and Icons. Uh, it is basically a station that delivers um, the types of TV shows that we grew up with. Uh, you know, those kind of classic TV series that are off the air but are still available over the air through a digital channel like Heroes and Icons. Now, um, the coverage area for Heroes and Icons, is, um, because I'm not, I'm not sure it's actually a contact. Because that's what we have is uh, if you get, Yeah, if you're over the air, you should, you, you should have access to it. I'm not sure if that, if that it's available on Comcast or DirecTV. So uh, I don't have an answer for you on that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so again, uh, I'm going to be starting out with uh, KRDO News Channel 13. Again, we are the ABC affiliate in the marketplace. And uh, news comes first. We have a new general manager in our building. Uh, he actually started a week before I did, and I've been on the job for about six weeks myself. Um, and so the emphasis is really on delivering news um, to the viewing audience. And uh, I've already spoken, not just to the general manager, but to the news director as well, about if we're able to bring in more revenue from this particular area in terms of advertising, which is an area that I'm focusing on, um, because I'm familiar with it, uh, we can actually start bringing the news crews down and covering more events and more news out of Trinidad and the Los Angeles County area. Um, so as we just discussed, we have three TV properties, uh, Channel 13, Telemundo, and Heroes and Icons. And, and in addition, another property that we uh, focus on quite a bit is krdo.com, um, our website and our mobile apps. This is a snapshot of the KRDO audience. I won't go into it, um, but in general, TV stations now uh, are still one of the top areas where all adults get their news as their primary news source. So television is still very strong, and with the addition of digital and website, um, it's a powerful combination. So here's a coverage map, um, our primary areas again, um, in terms of the metro, El Paso County, Pueblo County, and Teller County. Um, our DMA, which is our designated market area, which is a wider area of our signal. Um, Baca, Bent, Crowley, Custer, Fremont, Wedfano, Kiowa, Los Animas, where Trinidad is, and Otero counties. And additionally, we cover Chaffee, Elbert, Prowers, and Sawatchi counties. Um, our Telemundo affiliate, again, covers all the same areas as uh, KRDO. And we are on all uh, direct TV uh, and cable outlets, additionally, over the air, as well on Telemundo. And with KRDO.com, we reach over 250,000 visitors on a monthly basis, and we deliver 4 million plus impressions throughout Southern Colorado with our number one digital news resource. So visitors are actively consuming fresh news content on KRDO.com and our mobile app. Um, again, just some of the KRDO.com analytics. Um, over 2.6 million page views on a monthly basis, over 1.5 million unique page views on a monthly basis, and we have over 450,000 users on a monthly basis. In terms of our mobile news apps, almost 1.5 million screen views, 
and about but just over 21,000 users on the mobile apps. And on Facebook, we deliver, on average, over 210,000 Facebook followers. And on the mobile weather app, um, that's one of our more active apps as well. On your, on your one that there's 200,000, can you tell where that major population comes from for social media? like? Are your followers yeah. or those users? Are and followers? On the krdo.com where it says 462,000 users uh, who had at least one session, are, is this multiple users? I mean, if a person goes in there today and then goes in there tomorrow, are they in that count or is it individual? So, the, so it's actually what I mean is individual users and yes they go in, they can go in multiple times so is this across the month times they is this times or users this is users okay, this is so. actually individual okay. users and then those individual users themselves spend time on careduo.com and they deliver over 1.5 million pages okay. does that make sense mm -hmm. okay. so um, one of the things that I would like to propose to you and um, I have already had some brief discussion about this with Cy. But we have the uh, weather camera sponsorship available here in Trinidad. Um, there is no uh, KRDO weather camera right now here within the city limits. And we would like to offer you that opportunity. So what we would like to do is brand discovertrinidad.org and uh, the website would benefit as the Trinidad camera sponsor with KRDO News Channel 13 and KRDO.com. It would be an exclusive sponsorship of the Trinidad Colorado weather camera. It would be a networked camera mounted atop a designated high altitude spot for live up to the minute coverage of Trinidad and Los Angeles County. Um, <clears throat> so when one of our meteorologists references your weather station during the broadcast, the Discover Trinidad Dot org logo will appear live on air with the scenic Trinidad camera shot. And uh, our weather anchors use these cameras in every newscast, and Trin Discover Trinidad.org would reach over 250,000 people on a monthly basis on average with your weather camera sponsorship. So, what you're saying is that you would like to put, or you're offering to put cameras somewhere in a designated spot that would be advertised and used during the weather report? Yes, yes. exactly. And how many times would that would it be used like as a picture? Would it be used like ten times a year? Or would it be used? Um, it's well, so we deliver thirty six hours on a weekly basis of news and weather. So um, it rotates throughout because we have several weather cameras throughout right. the state. Yeah, right. So um, I can't actually tell you exactly how many times that would happen, but on average. Uh, what the deliverable is, is 250,000 uh, views, views yeah, by viewers watching the broadcast. And so it's not just television, it's also digital. So that's where the, the cumulative audience comes in. So do you have any other like small towns, not as big as Springs or Denver, that, you, that already utilize this mm -hmm. so that you show up at? Baltimore is one. Um, actually, there are three cameras available right now. Um, all of the other sponsorships have been taken. Um, I can give you that information, and I actually do have that, but I don't have it with me. So what you're saying, so I imagine that's right. right. What you're saying yeah. is when the news person says it's going to be 80 degrees, but down in Trinidad, and then it shows a picture. Yes, well, there's, bad weather, there, there's bad weather down there. They flashed us in the whole and so they, you know, so they rotate. Beautiful. They yeah. rotate with they they rotate um, right. with the other cameras. So you know it's going to be on a random basis as it pops up. So how long does it stay up in your? It's yeah, it stays it stays, it stays up yeah, yeah. pretty good time, and it's exclusive. The so they're not going to TV. Yeah. Yeah. Are you <laughs> they're not going to go from Colorado Springs to Trinidad or Puebla. So it's exclusive within seen, that weather pass. I've seen the different ones. I've mm -hmm. seen different ones. Yeah. So so quick, hang on a second. So. I don't watch the TV. Yeah. I don't. So, what what's going on when that's when you're seeing? They're it? talking. Mm -hmm. They're talking. They're talking about the weather. Talking it's, it's when they're talking about the weather, and then they'll say they'll come into us wherever the camera's uh, pointing to. 
this say yours turned to dad they have an accumulation of maybe one or two inches or and they'll the, go on to the, the cloud coverage or the nice weather or it's just different things that they'll mm -hmm. they talk about right yes you know, exactly. I, you know and it's not that it's a split second and it's gone they it's up there and i do see them in mm -hmm. loss of group is, is it a movable camera or is it just stationary in one direction? it's stationary on one particular area mm -hmm. yeah that's what it is like like if it was on top like, of that. Sim, like if it was on top of simpson's rest you would get that mm -hmm. view of the city right and, Fisher's and whatever Peak, would it be one, well one. there's going to be the, i mean and we incur the cost of, of bringing in and putting up the camera we just need to get approval either from a building site or uh, the city of trinidad if we want to put it up on uh, on the mountain or on the hill and have that vantage point so you know wherever it's agreed upon, wherever it's agreed upon uh, it, exactly and discovertrinidad.org would be the sponsor the big one yeah i like that angle too well, like and that's from like where? The that's from uh, South Commercial Street, mm -hmm. yeah. facing north. It's there's mm -hmm. a little hill right, right there. there. Yeah. There's right. It's a residential. It's area. a residential area. Yeah, you got that right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the option of all three of them. Yeah. So, but right. we only get one, right? Yeah, we only get we only, only get, get one vantage point. There's one camera. Okay. Yeah. And so here's an example. Uh, Craig, you were wanting to see what it would look like uh, on the air, and this is, it's the neighbor, Neighborhood Weather Network on News Channel 13, and here's an example with the Woodland Park camera. So it, it not only states Woodland Park, as it would be Trinidad, um, but the vantage point at the U.S. Highway 24 in Fairview Street. Um, and so you have the screenshot, it tells you what the weather, the temperature is, and you know, um, wind conditions and so forth and then that logo right there would be the discovertrinidad.org or the trinidad colorado logo that's currently on the website so that's the tv element and the next element of the weather camera is the digital part on krdo.com so additionally uh, <coughs> discover trinidad Dot org would be featured on krdo.com on um, the weather page. So a user would actually go and click on that tab which says Neighborhood Weather Network. So it's fixed in the navigation toolbar. And then there's also a thumbnail with the scenic, with the, the Trinidad scenic shot. And that's also fixed in the toolbox with the click through to the next page. And so here's each weather station listed on krdo.com. And so Trinidad would have one of those tiles with the scenic screenshot. And so when a user would click on the Trinidad screen or that logo, then it takes you to the Trinidad page on the weather network. So again, the scenic shot um, where that mortgage first, home second banner ad is, that would be discovertrinidad.org, and that is clickable to discovertrinidad.org, to the tourism website. And then it looks like there's advertising. So that's traditional. Um, there on the right-hand side, um, that's uh, not just um, some traditional banner advertising from other advertising, but also other links that take you to other sites if you're interested in going there. So people can advertise on our site or that we can advertise Trinidad on that? So your tile is going to be static and so it's always going to be there in that position. And yes, we not only sell other digital advertising, um, but then we have other networks that, other digital ad networks that buy advertising as well and it does appear on the krdo.com site. So uh, I'll give you some other examples and show you what uh, a screenshot looks like on the home page, and you can see where there is other advertising that appears there. So a uh, sponsorship of the weather camera on KRDO and KRDO.com would be an annual commitment. Um, we, as I said, we, we would make the investment in the camera. 
doing the setup, getting it set up so that uh, you know it's uh, operational. And uh, it's a $1,200 per month commitment, and over a 12-month period, we're looking at a total annual investment of $14,400 for that particular sponsorship. So, as I said, that is a, an annual contract, and it's not cancelable. Um, additionally, I also wanted to put together some advertising opportunities for you for tour, strictly tourism over the upcoming tourism season, this summer. Um, again, this is going to promote discovertrinidad.org, and it's designed to promote the local attractions, destination events, overnight lodging, shopping, and dining in Trinidad. Uh, we're going to utilize multiple media platforms to drive tourism and travel of interest outside the Trinidad area to the discovertrinidad.org website. And in turn, potential tourists and travelers would be made aware of Trinidad's unique offerings and encouraged to visit the Trinidad area, either as a family visit, a day trip, or overnight stay while supporting the local economy. So it features a high-frequency TV spot advertising campaign on the three networks, that's uh, KRDO, Telemundo, and Heroes and Icons. Uh, <clears throat> the campaign would air over 13 weeks, and I'm suggesting as early as July 2nd through Sunday, September 30th, and that's a 13-week period. Uh, KRDO would be the primary branding driver for the campaign. Telemundo uh, would be the uh, station to target Hispanic and Spanish-speaking families to visit as a family. And um, Heroes and Icon adds an inexpensive yet very high-frequency element to further drive awareness. Um, and all, all three TV stations target the Southern Colorado area. Um, and this proposal also includes a 13-week digital campaign utilizing KRDO.com products. Um, so I'll just go through this quickly. Uh, KRDO, uh, I am suggesting and proposing 482 15-second commercials to air in specific programming over the 13-week period. And so um, what we would be doing here is splitting up a 30-second commercial into two 15-second commercials at the same cost. And these are called bookends, and so you would get two 15-second commercials in each break that those, these commercials share. So at the top and at the bottom of the break. And so the investment for that over a 13-week period is 11960 and I actually have a, a schedule that I can leave behind with you that's very specific and shows you where the bridge programming, those commercials would air in, and what the cost is. So what you're saying is for approximately $900, a week, we would get 482 across the um, 15 weeks. second commercials over 13 weeks. Oh, it's not per week? No, it's not per week. We are going to be pretty Oh my gosh, you'd be the only advertiser. Um, 482 over 13 weeks. Over 13 the weeks. price of? 11960 The average comes out to 920 a week. And the number of spots is 38 per week. 38 per week. 38 per week. And I'll leave that behind you as well. And what kind of advertising, what would we, is this something we would want to, well, we have a couple something of, you would just make we, up? Or we have a couple of different it? options. I understand you already do have some TV commercials already produced. Is that my understanding? Is that correct? that have been produced in the past? It would be far past. Okay. Yes, yeah. 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 okay. I, I have priced um, production services in here, and so... Um, this is included? It, it's, uh, it's also included in the overall proposal, so we'll get to the, to the summary page. Um, so additionally, on Telemundo and on Heroes and Icons, I can provide, Got ahead of myself. Um, 650 15 second commercials on Telemundo over that 13 week period. And on Heroes on Icons, another 650 15 second commercials. 
And um, on Telemundo, it would be 1625 over the 13 week period. And on Heroes and Icons, $975 for the 13 week period. And that's almost 1300 commercials. That is the, the elements that uh, you feel are appropriate as well. So you can either go for the donut package or you can pick and choose. So everything is priced out so that you can, you can do that. Um, on the digital campaign, krdo.com. Um, what I'm suggesting is a high impact banner ad campaign across the krdo.com website and the krdo.com mobile news app. Um, <clears throat> so what we're looking at is a leaderboard and two medium rectangles above and below the fold, and I'll show you examples of those. All of these banner ads are click through functional to discovertrinidad.org. And I'm proposing 650,000 impressions over the 13 week period, and that's 50,000 impressions per week across the krdo.com website and the mobile apps. And the investment over 13 weeks is 3250. Um, and additionally, I'm also suggesting some homepage takeovers. And um, a homepage takeover would be ideal if there were some event where I'm assuming that you're supporting those through some funding as well. So um, for $500 for a 24-hour homepage takeover, um, the homepage <coughs> averages 9,300 page views per day. Again, the ads are click-through functional to your website or the Facebook page of the event. And um, it's just a, depending on availability um, in terms of the date that these would run. So here's an example of a homepage takeover, and then I'm, I can also give you some examples of the leaderboard and the medium rectangle. So this is what uh, an, an example of a homepage takeover on the homepage of krdo.com. So you can see that this is a sky socks example. So they get both skyscrapers on each side of the website, and this is exclusive. So there's not any other advertising that appears on the home page during this 24 hour period. It's exclusive. And it, so this is exclusive to the sky socks, it would be exclusive to Discover Trinidad. So you have the two skyscrapers on each side, you have the medium rectangle, which is the one that's in that uh, corner, the upper right hand corner, and then the leaderboard, which is that long rectangle that goes across the top. Additionally, um, uh, so those are all what's called above the fold, and then if you continue to scroll down as a user, you go below the fold, and then there's another medium rectangle there. So there are five banner ads that are click-through functional to the website, and again, that's a 24-hour exclusivity, and those would be used to promote a particular event. Or, uh, Tony, are those exclusive of any other advertising? So if we decided immediately, we, we couldn't necessarily invest in some of that more expensive advertising with the banner taking over the banner for specific events. Mm -hmm. Could we do that exclusive of anything else? Yes, you can do okay. that exclusive of anything else that is okay. available as well. All of these are exclusive, okay. but they're, at the same time, they're designed as a multi-platform sure. proposal so that everything works together to drive tourism mm -hmm. interest not only to your website, and in turn, you know, that turns into tourism dollars. And do you have any statistics on your click-through rates for 24-hour uh, takeovers? Um, that's a good question. I'll write that down and I'll get back that to back that. Back to yeah. Thank you. Okay. Do you get any package discounts? Like if the board were to decide on two items, do you get a discount for doing more than one, or it's just a set price? Um, I have, um, so currently we're in a political window uh, oh, because, yeah. of the, because of the, because of us by discounting during that particular period of time because, um, especially the news program, because the issues and the, the political candidates, I mean, they're just coming in and they're buying up the inventory. So um, all of the discounts that I can apply are already included into, into the package. <clears throat> um, so here's what the investment summary looks like. 
Um, KRDO, News Channel 13, 482 15 second commercials at 11.960. Telemundo, the 650 commercials at 1625. The same with Heroes and Icons, another 650 commercials at 975. The digital campaign with the 650,000 banner ad impressions, the 50,000 per week, that's at 32.50. If we were to do three homepage takeovers, that's at $1,500. And then for added value, I would provide three Facebook posts to over 210,000 caradeo.com followers. So that's actually a Facebook post campaign of 630,000 followers, and that's at no charge for added value. And then we would also do commercial production, and this is also discounted. So we would do up to three 15 second commercials produced by KRDO, um, and that's at $750. So that averages out to $250 per 15 second commercial. So if you were to look at the total package as a whole, it comes up to $19,735. That includes the $750 production fee. Or again, you can pick and choose the elements that you think are most appropriate. And that is my presentation. Thank you so much. Right. Well, Tommy, that was a Thanks whole lot of that was information. A whole lot of information. <laughs> and I think we'll all need to review it and Absolutely. put it on uh, the agenda. Okay. I have a quick question for you. Yes. Do you guys do uh, paid articles or paid article advertising? Um, on, on the website? Uh, or it's, yeah, because you guys write articles from your website. So, um, not. Thanks. Not currently on krdo.com. However, we do have other digital products available. Um, and when you mentioned, um, when you guys were talking about the I-25 corridor and the Highway uh -huh. 87 corridor, we actually have some digital products that are over and above krdo.com that we can utilize. They're called programmatic digital. And um, we can geographically target and behaviorally and uh, target people who are looking at tourism content, who are looking at tourism or hotels or attractions in southern Colorado, southeastern Colorado, we can get very specific and we can target people who are looking along the I-25 corridor, that Highway 7 corridor coming in from Amarillo and Oklahoma as well. So we can get very specific with that and if you're interested in looking at that i could put together a proposal for you <clears throat> on that and um, part of that also includes what's called native advertising which we can create an article um, on trinidad and the attractions or however we want to position it and then we can place that article on travel and tourism websites across the internet and so anybody who is looking at specific travel or tourism content, and if they're looking for it in a specific area, we can deliver those articles to them across the internet on those appropriate uh, websites. And it's not about targeting the, the specific website or a travel website, it's targeting people who are searching the internet with specific keywords. Um, they're on specific tourism websites. Uh, <clears throat> or their behavior online tells us that they would be a good target to deliver advertising to. And so that's the type of digital advertising we can do that's paid article and then it's placed on those websites. This is the KRDO TV schedule. Um, the Telemundo and Heroes and Icons would actually air on a Monday through Sunday, 6 a.m. to 12 midnight rotating basis. But um, KRDO is that's a uh, place the commercials in specific program and priced it out for you. So it must be pretty exciting getting involved in all this being that's in your home area. Oh, uh, yes it is. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and I actually have an appointment tomorrow. Uh, my, my sales manager is coming down 
and we're going to see the um, NRA Whittington Center. Right. So um, I actually am able to apply not only uh, the job at PRDO, what I'm doing now is actually much closer to my skill set and my experience. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm able to apply that here locally. And um, I do recognize how important tourism and travel is to this area. And so I'm committed to helping um, advertisers like yourselves and the Raptome Lodgers Tax Advisory Board as well, um, the NRA Whittington Center, those types of attractions to bring in more travel and tourism to the area. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, for a short distribution. Okay, great. So I moved this. This is not a staff report today. This is a, a, a new business, a policy item, because I think we need to talk about what brochure distribution is and make sure we're meeting the needs um, as you have it in your, your mind. So I'd like to talk about several things. One, brochure distribution. I think that means the actual physical dis, you know, distributing of the brochure. So we've got it in all the Colorado Welcome Centers. Um, I think your expectation is that we get it in every single downtown shop and restaurant that we can and that we get it up the highway to all of the tourism assets along the highway of legends as well as out east along the santa fe trail is that correct do you want to talk about what your expectations might be on that well hard hard is different than the soft like this right we're talking hard brochure hard distribution brochure. physically uh, delivering yeah i guess let's I talk about what we want out of that I would I would like to see some hard ones in the Pebble Springs and Denver area okay. too, besides the other area, because it's just like having our name on. I know we talked about mining the lake and up that area, and I dropped the ball on that because I said I'd get some and so uh, where I'm, get them up to my brother. Where I'm I going with this is. Is this something that staff's going to do, or do we need to look at something like a certified brochure distribution channel to distribute brochures? Sure. that comes into the motel. No, most hotels have banned those. La Quinta Chain has banned them. So you're only allowed at this point to put whatever whatever social media that you have inside your hotel. I did notice one at another There's, hotel. They're at the Holiday Inn, yeah. and they're at the Quality for some reason, because people took preference over, so they, they banned them. Um, anyway, I uh, the, one of the problems with our brochure is it doesn't fit into those car drives. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a problem in itself. But um, I do I believe that there were so many that was produced that we do have to get them out there instead of sitting in the warehouse. Yeah. So I'm hearing Pueblo Springs, Denver, as long as well as the Highway of Legends and the Santa Fe Trail. And hotels and B&B so people hotels remember if they're staying in town, there's things to do downtown. So we're looking at about 100 points of distribution. Would you say that's too aggressive or is that what you're thinking? No, that's how many, how many, how many uh, is there? Right now our points of distribution are fairly low. They uh, include points most of the downtown areas. I would probably say 50 total locations. How many were produced? Oh, uh, 20,000 20, of one cover, 20,000. We need 000. to look at a, at a instead Do you think 50 of, points of distribution is in, in, in the town, easily. Yeah. 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 Now, there's the towns that they use them, that they will go through uh, easy 800 a month this time of year, easy. Well, when you think of that. To distribute, the Pueblo Springs and Denver request would require that we look into a service mm -hmm. that actually services those locations. I don't think it's impossible that we could do the Highway of Legends. We could do within the county distribution. Local, locals, okay. Local and within the county distribution. But well, what yeah. you're saying, uh, outside. I, I want to get your feedback because we want to bring back some costs of that right. and how many brochures that would need. Because there will be shipping costs. There will be yeah. costs of actually acquiring the contacts in each of these communities yeah. and then re-upping costs, which are then re-shipping costs. So if we have the... Pikes Peak Welcome Center. Um, they're not a Colorado Welcome Center, but they're just their own personal welcome center. So that would be an excellent one. So if we put them in there, we would have to make a contact with them, figure, um, introduce ourselves, and try to get into them because it's not it's not just a it's not a give process. It's a negotiation process because a lot of times they already have 
everyone and their mother sending them things so you not only have to guarantee that they'll put it up because you can send it to anyone and in the tourist business this happens a lot actually because a lot of people go through these large-scale distributors who it's the same list every year and they never get updated so we would have to have that constant relationship with them to find out how many they needed and then check in with them to find out oh we're down to 50 we need two more boxes this time instead of one those type of aspects well targeted areas like that would be so the feedback I hear from you is you want us to start developing some of that targeted and bringing back the cost of that. Yeah. Okay. So because we're delivering this distribution report and it occurs to us that we've not had that conversation about what your expectations are. So based on what Andrew's saying is we've probably got 50 points of distribution locally. Are you wanting to expand beyond that into the region? Or do you want to see costs? So uh, and I want to see some feedback. So if we sent some last year or, or this year to this welcome center, how many do they have left? So that I don't know that we yeah. can produce. We can certainly request that type of information. So we sent 100 to 300 copies to each of the Colorado welcome centers from their request that that's how many that they've given out. Uh -huh. So could you contact that? As no, them? through our Colorado welcome center, chain we'll talk to the state and see if they're tracking inventory of required brochures and ours is on the required list which means every welcome center can do that excuse me mr Kress, but we'll contact the state and see if they have figures on that mm -hmm. i can say for ourselves as we're retooling our welcome center we wouldn't be able to give you that figure locally but it may be that they don't track but the we are in the line would be able the, to do that though welcome centers to us. we are so yeah. from my welcome center manager meeting um it's not it's not something that's tracked um, as in um here's like every day they check how many brochures are from each right. organization it's a um there's basically a big distribution um cooperative excel list that um says what are the mandatory what are the regional and what are the optional and all the contact information so it's the welcome center manager's job to to figure out when the brochures are running low and actually call up that call. individual to order okay. more. But they would call you and say we're running low. Yes. We would okay. be able, with these new brochures, to tell you exactly what we distribute. Okay. Mm -hmm. We started with the distribution to all okay. the other okay. ones. Okay. So they will get a hold of us. So I believe our I, previous I brochure would, was not approved to be in Welcome Center. I was so delivered to this Welcome Center sometimes and mm -hmm. they would uh, really be waiting for certain brochures that they were on. And so that's all based on who is the person who's giving them out to you. So sometimes, okay, we'll so what of this that might get done with their uh, in six months instead of a full year. Right. Which so it, it. it sounds like what we need to bring back to you is the proposal for what it would look like to expand it, not only in dollars for the delivery and as Andrew stated, the shipping costs, but also what amount of brochures we would have to commit to be in a program like that understand yeah. that that might accelerate redoing the brochure and, and when i I'm, I'm, what i want to know is when you say distribute them in carl springs and pueblo to where right well that's right I that's what that's we're going to come back, back so in we're, we're, okay we're so but we are the welcome you. center up there now right there, well the welcome centers just for understanding Colorado welcome centers are border towns Right. So you're at the gotcha. very edge oh, okay. of the state. Yeah, there is nothing in the I-24. Okay. So like the High Speed Welcome Center I'm talking about, that's a private organization. That's a private organization. I know there's about, yeah, there's a lot of private welcome centers and for communities, but there's not, there's only nine to five brochure delivery. And you choose the points of distribution. Mm. They own the racks in those places and they distribute, for example, we couldn't drive out and put them in the El Moro rest stop. But through the certified service, we can pay for that. So that is one of the things is, we're going to look at is, is... Is certified at the uh, exit... Uh, exit 11 they are. Or exit, exit 18, 18 they are. They have a contract with all of the CDOT rest centers. They do. All, all the, the state contracts. CDOT rest centers. So for example, you can tailor your contract with certified. And you could choose to where you would like them distributed to. And you could, and then we provide them with pallets of brochures, and then they distribute to these specific locations. So I think that was what we were trying to get the sense of bringing back to you. If you have an appetite to go down that road, we'll let us bring you some figures and let's talk yes. about it. Okay. And yes. I, th I think, I don't like the brochures, so I think we need to get rid of them as fast as possible. <laughs> so I know we need to expand them so we can get on to the new, the next brochure so okay. Tom's right they do not belong in the warehouse 
So we gotta get, get them out and get rid of them and get on to the next one. Okay, so okay. this answers distribution from the physical brochure standpoint. And, and then when we, we do distribute these and, and then it's gonna give us a better idea as to you know, where, where we go next from there. Another thing about going with the group like certified is they are required to keep inventory mm -hmm. of what they distribute and what they pick up. So you do have an idea that's of what's actually making it out there. that's what we're looking for. Or if we had specific, to Andrew's suggestion, a specific relationship with this local welcome center, right. if we decided Durango was something we wanted to target, they had a city visitor center that we would work directly with them. I think during the summer, any mountain town uh, would be a good uh, place because that's where a lot of people are going. So that was one type of distribution. Now I want to talk about a different, is, is everybody clear on what we're mm -hmm. bringing you back? Another type of distribution is we put these ads out, and for example, Colorado.com, the state uh, vacation guide, it used to be Audubon Magazine, sometimes it's True West when we put those in. Part of our placement of the ad is they will send us leads, they will send us individuals who go on to either their website or in the ad there's a response and they say, hi my name is Karen Griego, I'd like you to send me information on Trinidad. So those leads come in as Excel spreadsheets. In general, from the state, they come in. I think at one time when they came in from Audubon Magazine, where Tourism Warden had done a lot, it was a certain type of file that could be transferred into an Excel spreadsheet. So if we get these requests, how do you want us to respond to that? Do you want a digital copy emailed to them if they provide an email, or do you prefer a hard copy be sent out through the mail if they do not provide an email? Well, when they're taking the time to actually do that online, I, I kind of almost, I mean, if we don't have brochures, just digitally, Digital. but I kind of like to have both because people yes. don't take time. People don't take time to fill out those forms on the internet unless they're serious about coming. Because it's a lot we, of time. I think if we have time. options, it's better. Yeah. So if they send us all of their information, um, we could do several things. We could respond by sending them a digital, thanking them and sending them a digital link or a link to the digital copy of the brochure. We could also send them an email and say, we're mailing you um, a hard copy of the brochure. Please let us know if you have any questions. Are you okay if we approach this that way and mm -hmm. begin to make that part of our work week so that everything gets responded to? Well, the, the most important thing is that they are they are contacted back. That's yeah. the first thing that we have to make sure that happens. Is if they're interested in us, we have to say hello. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, and then. And uh, then send the brochures. Send both. Do both. And then I would like to start to to collate a um, contact email list. list so that when there's an event, they've already filled out these forms. Right. We can just send it out. Blues Fest is coming. The Santa Fe Trail Festival. That's the next step we were going to through our creative district survey for space to create. We got a relationship on this. Um, oh, Andrew, what's the name of that software that we use? Mailchimp. Mailchimp. Thank you. Uh, Mailchimp. So we have our Mailchimp account where we have everyone who has requested the information for that ongoing project. Actually manage the list. So let's say Craig starts getting emails and he wants to opt out. He just opts out and it it's it comes off of the account. It's a very reputable. <laughs> it's a very reputable newsletter based or information based um, system because if you opt out, they truly take you out. Um, so is this a route you want to go with this information we're collecting for distribution? Everybody's good with that? Yes. Okay. So what we're going to look at is starting to set this up and bring you some information um, back at our second meeting in July. I don't know that we'll have this finited, but the one thing we will do immediately is those that are requesting information will begin to respond. Now because of the changes in staff and tourism board over the time, I think SPI right now is the point of contact to receive those those communications. So one of the first things we want to do, Sai, is manage to get those emails coming to at least two or three folks here on our side so that we can make sure we're getting it covered so we're not relying on you to forward that to us. Right. Because I have been. Right. Yeah, you I have, have been. Yeah. You have been. And we have them from the beginning of this year. But I, I would like to clean the system up a little bit. Yeah. I looked at that. I looked at they they're still emailing to info at Trinidad. 
It's in the email that I've sent you. Is it info right. at Historic Trinidad? Yeah, well, you yeah. can see it on the email because I just forward it, but you can see where all they're sending it. Okay, we'll work with Monica to okay. change that over okay. and trace that back to where they're where that's initiating from. That's something we haven't been able to figure that's out. That's Chris exactly. Newton. And that's Chris Newton. Okay. Well, we and, want to pay that bill. And then while we're talking about that, and while we're having that, that if, if we do that, you know, I just forward them because we were trying to play catch up. But I, I would like for the board to see, to make sure that the board sees. That. So what I think we'll do is what we traditionally used to do when the mm -hmm. chamber had that contract, and that is when a list comes in and it's got all the names on it. When we provide you with the distribution report, mm -hmm. I don't know that we'll print all the paper, but when we send out our agenda, we'll provide you back a distribution report mm -hmm. that shows how where they were sent. Then we'll give you a physical report in the meeting that tallies the total of how many they were sent to and maybe the areas of the country they were sent. But at one point in time, every tourism board member received a copy of all of the addresses of where we sent them out to so that it was really transparent on where they were going. With a report on how many brochures went out, how many states they went to, and what the total postage cost was, which the tourism board paid. Okay. Okay. That's what we wanted to do. So this will move off of and back to a staff report um, okay. once we get it rocking and rolling. Terry, the motion yeah. distribution yes. might be, it might help simplify things on our end if we understand a relative uh, cost amount that you guys want because it gets very, very expensive to move heavy boxes. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah. yeah, I mean, even if we think about sending out um, individual, I think on average we're getting every two weeks 100 or something during the summer. Uh -huh. On these people, if we average that as $2 to $5 a postage stamp, depending on where you have to go, that also adds up really quickly. So just to know what we're working with relative to what you guys are interested in spending, can, that will sort of help us know how far we should reach and those aspects of those. Cause it, at, one, at one point, I think maybe also that once we do that with these brochures now, maybe we could get to where we could drop ship instead of them coming to us. So that's and very then, expensive uh, yeah. relatively because then they're shipping in individual boxes instead of shipping crates. Yes, but but the one thing is is they're coming to us, we're paying for shipping and then we're reshipping them yeah, out. Yeah, So a yeah. drop ship. that with the so Welcome Center. We do with so the so a drop centers. ship may be a, a, mm -hmm. a good thing to look at yeah. also because if, of not being double charged. If we had this, for example, the certified folder right. um, contract in place, they would have was that that booklet could just have a seal on the end of it and could have a, a label put on it or handwritten and mail it out. I guess we need to know how much that cost. And I, mean, I think we're going to have to or yeah, we're going to have to it? do a, a little bit of this before we can tell yeah. you. But Andrew's yeah. correct; that information has to come back to you. Okay, that's wonderful. It's sort of an unusual year because it's on a Wednesday. And so things will happen in town from Wednesday all the way through to the weekend. Um, the posters are distributed around. There's places on Facebook. Check it out. Make sure that we, as the tourism board, is making sure that we encourage people to spend time that week in town. Okay. Anybody else have any other report? No. It's been an exciting summer here in Trinidad with so many music and lyrics and poetry festival. Just an incredible, a really array of every weekend. We so many things to do in Trinidad. Yeah, there, there are a lot. We, we were involved in two things this weekend, and they were beautiful. That music and lyrics was, that went quite well oh, for everybody. Yeah. That's great. I was out of town this time. You can actually go out and party in Trinidad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All night long. Okay, staff, uh, staff reports. Okay, so the Welcome Center staffing update. We have hired Miss Marty Hackett to be our Welcome Center manager and event planner. She started on the 11th and worked um, a couple of days getting geared up with our Space to Create Celebration downtown. She fully uh, went into the Welcome Center on Friday and just in her first week has had enormous success. Number one, first priority, recruit those volunteers. So we started with 15. I think she's already got three or four, um, three or four going in terms of recruitment. So occasionally you will see Marty to give you reports on what the visitation numbers look like, um, how many volunteers we have recruited. 
I did want to report to you that when we hired Marty, that made six employees at the Welcome Center. We did do a reduction of force, and we only have now a Welcome Center manager and two Welcome Center associates. We no longer have an assistant manager position. We have only the manager and two associates. Now I know based on the discussions that are going on with the city attorney and city manager that may or may not remain in your cost center, aspects of it will not, but regardless of where the Welcome Center is um, funding, regardless of which fund that funding comes from, there will always be a tie between the Welcome Center and the Tourism Board because in general, regardless of what your responsibilities are, the efforts are pointed in the same direction. So I expect for you to start to hear great things. Um, Marty will address the event planner position at some point, but we really, really needed to get the Welcome Center rehabilitated and up and running. So Once she gets her um, her volunteers, yes, she needs to bring them to the businesses downtown. She started with the volunteer this meeting this week and laid out a series of them, and yes, that's on the calendar to do to do for sure. I think with 15, she was going to try to get a little more critical mass, okay. and. Um, the season's full and going right now, so they're seeing hundreds. I think I was there the other day for a couple of hours, and within that hour, we saw more than 200 folks within that hour and a half wow. that I was there. So it's extremely busy right now. So Marty and the two associates, as well as the volunteers that are on staff or have their hands full, but we absolutely expect to get the volunteers trained with what's going on in the downtown and get that operation um, going. So at any rate, that's where we are on that. A second thing that's not on your agenda, but I wanted to report, um, we've been invited and I'll be attending on the 27th, which is next Wednesday and Wednesday, a media reception in Denver. This came out of our craft initiative. So we'll be providing four dozen cookies that Nicole Paradiso made, similar, they won't have space to create, but Trinidad, similar to go in the goodie bags of the 40 media representatives that will be there. Trinidad is one of 15 jurisdictions that's been provided. We have given a written report on what's going on in the fall in Trinidad, and then we'll have an opportunity to present what's going on within Trinidad. The goal of the media reception is to touch all four media outlets, and then to begin to arrange familiarization tours of those media outlets down here. So what should come out of this media reception is I'm hoping for the Colorado Tourism Office, and I'm hoping we can participate in this a couple of times a year going forward. So I'll have a report for you at our next meeting on how that went and what the outcomes were. Okay, thanks, Chair. Sure, that's what we have today. Uh, approval of bills? Um, we did not include the bills on this, um, on this agenda because they're in flux right now. Okay. They are, City Council is continuing to approve them until they address this. Next meeting, there will be no meeting the first week of July because it's... Let's go see some fireworks. Uh, July 18th? Yes. I see that it's 11 o'clock a.m. It's 9 to 11. Oh, 9 to 11. And then again on August 1st. <laughs> on the last season. Yeah, we decided we're going to be open. Okay. We always close on Great. holidays. <coughs> Or in July, I'm going to close. Um, I the only thing else is, I guess there's a question, if we're always going to be in here or during work sessions, can we make sure we're still in there so that... On the first meeting of the month, we'll be in there, and then on the second meeting, we'll be in here when we have formal presentations. <coughs> I know there's a preference. Um, our formal presentations allow us to use the AV. Uh, it's been suggested to me we should meet in here all the time, but I understand that the board at times likes to meet in work session agendas. So the second meeting in July, we will meet in here, but the first meeting in August, we'll go back to meeting in there at the first meeting, <coughs> and meeting in here at the second meeting for work sessions and then approval meetings. Okay. Anybody else got anything else? Okay. Everybody rocks here. <laughs> Good meeting. Thank you. Bye.